Hello, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use Pear Deck on any Google Slides you have. First off, how do you install Pear Deck? Um, a lot of you probably have Pear Deck installed, and so if you do, you would just go to add-ons and it should be right there, Pear Deck, Pear Deck for Google Slides add-ons. If you do not have it installed, you would go to get add-ons and it should be should pop up right there. You can search it. Um, it's super easy to install. You would just takes a few few minutes, and then it should be right in your add-on. So we have the premium version for Elkhart. So we get a lot of pro a lot of pro features. So one of the features is adding audio to slides. You get a lot of um, templates through Pear Deck too because we have the pro version. So and kids get their slides back to them. So when you're done with presenting your Pear Deck, students will get their own copy that they did in their Google Drive in the Pear Deck takeaway. So there's some really cool features with that. First off, you would just pick any Google slide you have. A lot of times there's this new cool feature with Immersive Reader. So anytime you have text on a slide, students can have it be read to them through Pear Deck. So because Immersive Reader is on top of all of your Google Slides when you present with Pear Deck, students can have these um, long texts be read to them either in English, they can slow it down or speed it up, or in their own language. So it's a great accessibility tool for all of our students. And so it does not work if there's text on image. So if you have an image like here, you can see this is an image, the immersive reader, reader will not read these words, but it will read these words for them. So that's just something to remember. Another thing I would do, so if I just have a slide like this, I would just put, let me go back, the draw option on it because then students can annotate their slides. So um, you can kind of go through on what to annotate on your end. So if you're on the whiteboard, you can just circle and underline. And then while you're doing that, students can do it on their end too. And so when the students are done with that, because they get the takeaway, they get the annotations back to them in their Google Drive. And so you can just add that on top of all of your slides as just a way for students to engage with the slideshow. If you have something like an image like this, you could put this draggable feature on because then you can have students point to different parts of like a picture. So for this, it's awesome because you could have students point to different parts of the photo photosynthesis process and engage students in that way. Um, so you can go through and say, okay, let's everybody, let's point at this part, let's point at this part. Um, Cause then students are uh, working with you and identifying things in the slide instead of just doing it like on their own. Um, same for this, like if you want to have a draw feature where you're breaking, breaking out the formula or a draggable feature, or you can add, there's other choices here. You can add, have them respond to this. So you can say, I want you to, it takes a second for it to load. So I want, I want you to respond and summarize this formula in words. You can do that and students will be able to type out their response. If you have a multiple choice question, you can add that here. If you add a multiple choice question, you're gonna add the prompts here, but your question will be on the slide. So these are just your um, different props there. But then your question again, would be here so the students will see your question and then on their end they'll see the choices. So again you can add audio to each of your slides which is awesome. Another feature for accessibility feature and you can see here there's a whole bunch of templates um, just to help make your slideshow more engaging and then there's critical thinking and social emotional learning slides, templates that you can use, and then all of this content templates that they have access to. Um, so we can look through the science, like draw the atom. And if we use this, 
a lot of this is also you can change so we'll it's in here so you can change the atom so instead of hydrogen you can have it be something else so these are not always like locked into what they have um, available so you, there's a lot of features that you can change to help it work with what you're teaching on so. let's go into presenting. So if I start my lesson here, click this bu button, you'll have two options. You'll have your student pace activity and then your instructor instructor pace. So this is your instructor pace is something that you'll do if you're presenting to your whole class. Your student pace is something that you do for e-learning e or for um, if you have a blended learning classroom set up. Two things will pop up. You would have your presenter page, your presenter slideshow, which is loading. And then you'll have your teacher dashboard, which is popping up right now. So this is what the students will see. And then they join with the code there. You can also give them a link. And then this is your teacher dashboard that you have access to. So I'm going to join with my device so it will tell you how many students you have connected which is great so we're going to start the class so students will get um, a little thing to say how are you feeling today and you'll get feedback from that too another little sel feature and then you can see down here that um my air my arrow is off but that students can press that immersive reader option and it will actually read out what is on the slide. So you can change the language to a different language. They have a lot of different languages available. You can change the text size or you can change how fast or slow it is read to you. So, and that is available on all the slides that you have text on. Um, something if you're doing with video, you want to make sure you add their extension in Chrome for videos to work. It should be, it's right here, it's the Pear Deck Power Up, and you need that in order for videos to be able to work. Um, students won't have anything on their end, it will just show on your presenter if you have videos. So, this is what you as a teacher for your dashboard, you will see. And so if I want to go into photo, so the first one, photosynthesis, let's say it's waiting for responses. So as a student, I'm going to draw, draw out some common, some important words. And you can see on your teacher dashboard, your responses from your students. Since I only have one in here, it will only show one. But if you had more students, you can just scroll down and see. You can see them all laid out like a grid, which is awesome for a really just quick reflection to see where your students are at. And then if you wanted to give feedback and say, like, yeah, I don't know, great word choices, maybe, you can send that feedback. And then as a student, I will get a little notification to say I have new feedback from my teacher. So I would click that and it will show me my teacher's feedback, and then I can respond to that as a student. You can kind of have a little conversation going, which is awesome for a little, some great feedback tools. It boosts engagement in your classroom. It gives opportunities for students who really don't like raising their hands or getting feedback out loud. So again, it's kind of giving more students more choices, opportunities, and something really easy to do. And all that I was able to do that because I added the draw feature to all of my slides. So even if I don't have students, like if I don't want students drawing while I'm presenting, I can lock their screens so that they can't draw. But then if I want feedback, if I want that engagement, I can just unlock it and then they can do whatever they want on their slide end and then you get access on this. You can see what they're doing. You, you're locking them in, they can't move forward, they can't move back, so kind of gives you more control in that in that area. You can see this for the draggable one, I on my end have a dot that I can drag to different parts of it. And if you have 
multiple students, you'll have multiple little dots. It's really cool to see. And so you can see how easy it is to use Pear Deck. It's really simple. And then if I'm afterwards and I see a lot of issues, like I see students maybe picking the wrong answer, I can add a new prompt and I can say, okay, let's pause or let's, let's see. Maybe this. So maybe I want to see like how they're feeling because on my end, I don't really see them. Um, they're kind of missing the mark. And then you can get feedback from your students like, how, are, how do you think you're doing right now? Um, it was super easy to add. There's a lot of different prompts. You can see right here, if I want to do a quick um, draw a picture, maybe if I'm doing something in my lesson or a true or false statement, a temperature check, you can see there's all these um, different options. So that's why I would add Pear Deck to all my slides because one, it gives you control over where your students are at and it engages them because it helps them follow along with you. Um, two, it gives you feedback options. You saw how awesome that feedback tool is. And then three, students will get this slide back to them. So you don't have to do any sharing. Once you're done with it, we can end. We can end the Pear Deck. I'll end with a class, so I'll just do it soon. And then when you end it, you'll get a link. Your students will get a link it's right here. Other ways to share, you'll generate your take takeaways. And now students will have access their slide that they annotated, that they worked through. They'll have access to that on their end. Thanks for watching and make sure you follow our channel for more tech tips.